Galobers. That's our word brought to you by the Freedom Feeds. Pot fading since September. And I'm here with Jeremy <laughs> Flatlever. <laughs> Pod fader. There we go. <laughs> We're here with Jeremy Pod fader. And That's I'm me. Jesus. Yeah, how's it going, man? <laughs> oh, I'm fade, fade, fading away, man. It's wonderful. Yeah, well, we were, I was just going to say, your internet's doing a whole lot better. Hopefully that'll be better. My internet's doing a whole lot better. And then the first take of this thing, you cut out right right. How are you doing? <laughs> so we moved awesome. the server. Hopefully this will fucking work. And then I also have the, 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 the landlord wanting to come and do a, an apartment inspection. I don't know when. They just said, oh, it, we'll be there anytime from like 9 o'clock to mm, 5. Like, it's, <laughs> it's not fucking helpful. I want to record a podcast today, you jerk. So, Just leave a, re- just leave a recording. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll, uh... <laughs> so I'm going to uh, pause this if, the, if, it's, if, it's, if it comes up. I don't know if it's going to come up, so we'll see. Yeah. So, anyways, how was how was your uh, your your life adventure been going? Uh, that's been causing uh, the freedom fiends to wither on the vine. <laughs> we can blame yeah, you, well, right? Sure, why not? Okay. I mean, uh, pr- well, pretty much all the shows, other than this one that I'm a part of, have faded since I've been on the road <laughs> because yep. I've been too busy to do anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, th- things were going pretty well until, uh, unfortunately, we had some issues with Murder Dog recently. My um. dog. And uh, yeah, she a uh, few few weeks back, she took a tumble while we were at the park oh. with the kids. She uh, was up somewhere she probably shouldn't have been, and I probably should have stopped her. But she was having so much fun, and yeah, she ended up needing like emergency surgery, had to have her spleen removed. And uh, if it was just that, it actually would have been fine because she's been recovering from that uh, amazingly, considering her age. Um, but uh, they found some uh, they found some nasty stuff inside when they uh, were doing the surgery. So. Oh. Yeah, we got to deal with the big C word now, oh. and uh, yeah, so that was kind of a bummer. But I'm trying to stay positive, and uh, I actually just got her in inside. I got her into a uh, clinical trial at the University of Pennsylvania, which ha- houses one of the biggest veterinary schools in the world, uh, for uh, this new herbal supplement that they've been studying for the past six or seven years that seems to be having pretty good results uh with especially with this particular cancer uh so you know we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah well I'm, I'm sorry to hear that my cat started to start to decline a little bit too so i kind of yeah. feel your pain uh, no c word as far as i know uh, but she's been losing a lot of weight and i've been having to feed her wet food um it doesn't uh, seem like because she, because she's losing on a white. I'm starting to go like, is it because you can't chew the the food anymore? Let's try the wet food. Let's see how that's going. And, let's, let's, and she was just sitting there devouring like, on, <laughs> like a huge. Like I, I got like the big cans. I got actually got the big cans, and she devoured the whole can. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, she's just hungry. Yeah. So, so she, it's just, she probably wasn't able to eat it. That's probably why she was losing a lot of weight. Well, also cats getting older, they lose weight anyway. But I'm I'm pretty sure that compounded the issue. But she's doing a lot better today, so we'll see. Well, we don't know. She's she's been losing a lot of energy, losing a lot uh, of weight. Um, her eyes have not been doing well. She's got like kitty cataracts. Um, yeah. What did you say? What did she, what did she say? She's eighteen. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> Twenty. She's oh yeah okay yeah, yeah that's uh you know that, she's I've had a, a couple of cats make it that far but <laughs> she's she's le- legitimately a nineties kid. <laughs> oh like, yeah, she she was around when Bill Clinton was president, so that that's nuts to think that a cat was around with Bill Clinton. <coughs> yeah, Bill Clinton was around. Yeah, so um, so yeah, like I I've started up a new show. Um, uh, go away, AMC. I'll watch a movie later. Uh, a, uh <laughs> we should talk about that too. Um, so um, I started up a new show on my YouTube channel. It's a it's a live stream show. Uh, with the guy that was on talking about the Freemasons episode on the, on the Lulberts. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we decided, hey, let's let's do a podcast that's not about niche libertarian stuff. Let's get into like the broader world of entertainment. So we're kind of doing like crit- criticism of like not just like movie. We're not going like, oh, this movie was great. This movie was bad. There's lots of that stuff. But more about like the, the culture surrounding it and some of the terrible things that are happening around it, like Comics Gate and all that stuff. Um, and some of the craziness that's just kind of going around around the mainstream and some some internet drama, not really internet drama so much. I guess there's like a big scandal going on with a company called Big uh, Better Help. We should talk about that too. Um, but it was my, it was a good opportunity to do like a podcast where I'm not like completely internet uh, or not internet. Um, Lober infighting. 
the entire time. <laughs> so if, if that's what you like, we're doing that too. Um, but one of the things that we were we were debating on talking about because it related to like a bigger candidate was something that I'm probably going to dedicate the most amount of time to on the show, and that's what's going on with the Adam Kokesh campaign 2012. Um, 2012. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry, 20, 2020. I'm I'm going. I'm telling you, man. I'm being gaslit right now, and it's starting to work <laughs> by saying that three people should go to jail because they all did something terrible. But they're all different. And what? Why they? Why are they going to jail? Because I'm saying like there's a difference between these three crimes. I that thought we weren't talking a about this. Defender. <laughs> and so it's fucking driving me crazy. And I'm thinking that it's fucking literally Obama Obama presidency first term right now. So, um, <laughs> so anyways, I thought yeah. we weren't talking about this. We're Wait not talking about it. We're not talking okay. about it. Okay. <laughs> It's it's fucking crazy. People on the internet are fucking crazy. Um, well, yeah. Speaking of crazy people on the internet, um, so there there was this guy that I did an interview with recently, which is set, it was unfortunately unfortunate that I did the podcast with him uh, a couple of weeks ago versus maybe last week because there's been a major development in that story <laughs> that he was telling. <laughs> um, so his name is Graham Smith, um, and he runs a YouTube channel called. Volunt- uh, voluntarist, voluntarist Japan, also known voluntary as, Japan. I think, I think, uh, it's I think volu- it goes by both. Like he says, voluntary Japan on his show, but oh, the I, think, name I thought the that channel, was the name of it. Oh, okay. The, the name of it is voluntarist Japan, and I, I okay. see both. So I, I was kind of confused when I was editing the episode. I was like, ah, I'll just say voluntarist Japan and whatever. Either way, he goes by Kafka or so, uh, you probably know this on Steam. Ka- Ka- well, yeah, it's Ka- Kafka Anarchy because it's like, okay. all one word. So okay. On Steam it, and I'm not a big fan of Steam it. Uh, you seem to be. Uh, yeah, we talked about that the last time. Yeah, I was yeah, on, yeah. I think. A, a practical user of it, I know, but I, we just don't want to bury any leads. Um, so this this guy we were talking about it was talking about how he was uh, making a lot of critical posts uh, against Adam Kokesh's run for president, which now he's not running for president; he's running for Senate yep. uh, for Arizona. He decided to dial back his campaign a little bit. Um, and the guy's still been critical of him, uh, and and the, what he's saying he's going to do if he gets elected, uh, from a very principled libertarian pers- or voluntarist perspective, right? Because Adam is using the term voluntarist. Voluntarists don't vote. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's 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 a summary of his criticism. Uh, but either way, a very very basic summary. So I guess because of this, it's been getting a lot of uh, track. I guess steam, pun intended, on um, steam, <laughs> um, <laughs> and a lot of people are starting to criticize uh, Kokesh or be critical of his campaign. And because of that, they've been losing money like crazy. You probably know the the more, the, the numbers more than I do about how much Kokesh makes on posts on Steam. It. Yeah, I actually don't even look anymore, but I know he, you know, he was one of those people who was always getting like the hundred plus dollar, you know, posts, mm-hmm. uh, even for the most inane BS My or dog's even okay. just, or even just, or even just reposts of his like videos from like years ago. Like mm-hmm. people just like everybody upvotes him or, uh, he had whatever specific bots set up. Cause you know, that's how, the, that's how a lot of people make their money over there. They have a bunch of bots set up that vote on all these things. <laughs> Uh, and he did have one of the huge whales in his corner for a long time who had thrown a lot of their uh, so-called steam power in his in his corner, which was where he was generating a lot of his funds from. Mm-hmm. And I know I think I think uh, Gra- I think you guys talked about that when you had Graham when you talked to Graham was that uh, because of because of Graham's uh, constant, you know, questioning of what Adam's doing, the guy had actually pulled a huge chunk of it away from Adam. Yep. Uh, uh, earlier this year, which obviously made them even more mad, which of course leads a lot more credence to the uh, the, the accusations that Graham has made since, because mm-hmm. you know it's, it seems to fall right in line with yeah he just kept pushing pushing pushing, and now they're like oh crap now we just lost our sugar daddy so now we have to do something yeah and allegedly I, even though I, I said on my stream it wasn't allegedly it's pretty clear that they did it so fuck it I'll let you say allegedly well. Yeah. It's, okay. Well, it's clear. It's clear. It's clear. It's clear that what's his face did it. It's. It's. Uh, I guess you could still say allegedly that you know the campaign was involved. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that, that's, exactly. That part is allegedly. Um, that Ben Farmer reached out for to a uh, um, an infosec hacker uh, and not a hacker in the historic or the historic the heroic sense of the term, which is probably the most accurate word, but probably more like a like a 
try to reach out to a, a cracker, I guess, and try to convince him, like, look at this terrible person, and they're a troll, and they're spending all their time trying to ruin us, and they're taking large amounts of money from us, and he's a terrible, awful person, and this infosec guy was like, yeah, it sounds, sounds pretty terrible. So here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll destroy his life. Uh, we'll gaslight him. We'll try to get him fired from his job. We'll dox him. We'll dox his family. Uh, we'll do go after not just him, but his, also his kid, uh, and there's nothing we can do about that. It's either, it's, it's either all or none. That you know, they're all the whole family is going to get involved in, in the uh, in this operation, or they're not going to get involved at all. And he was like, oh, "I don't want to have my name on it if that's the case." Um, and then he was like, "But that's you don't have a choice." And he's like, "Okay, well, as long as as long as it doesn't get back to me, type of attitude." I don't remember exactly what Ben said uh, in those things. And the guy went Something and, along those lines. yeah and looked looked up Graham and said like, "Okay, who is this guy? What is what is he up to to try to gather information on this guy?" And he was like, "Oh no, no, he's just a guy who's just critical of your campaign, like." Wh- and it, it's just very effective criticism of your of their of your campaign. And he was like, "Fuck you," blocked him on on Signal, and then released all of the information to Graham, including screenshots and video of of him going into Signal and looking it up. And the phone number is the same phone number that Ben Farmer uses. Mm, not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah like, this is uh, clearly terrible, terrible, terrible fucking behavior on on Kokesh's part. Um, your reaction? <laughs> My reaction. Well, I mean, I, I, as I, as soon as I heard about this, I, I didn't obviously. I, I, I believed Graham because I, I know what these, uh, what these guys have been, and and Farmer especially. Ben was involved in something. It was either earlier this year or yep. something late last year where there was a kid involved too. Oh, what wasn't there? Not where, where, where there was mention of somebody's family being involved, or somehow trying to drag it in, and then like I can't remember what that was, but like there's always some stupid drama following Adam. I think it, I think it came after the the his arrest, um, you know, when they were trying to claim that he he was being targeted because he decided to run for president. That whole BS thing earlier this year, well, that was earlier this year, right? I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> Whatever the hell that was, but there was something You're else. Feeling that came the up effects then. of my gaslighting, probably, but it <laughs> was. Yeah, so I don't put it. I, I don't put it past them at all because I've seen this type of uh, this attitude. Because I've seen screenshots of conversations. Oh, that's what it was. Ben went after. Uh, Ta- he went after Tatiana yeah. Morose. I know that. I know that was that was what I was going to bring up. If you didn't say, it. I thought this was something. Yeah, else too, that's so what okay. it was. That's what it was. But there was something involved, connected in that. Somebody's kid got brought into the conversation. Oh. It was a whole thing. I don't remember what it was, but it was something along these lines too. That basically showing no regard whatsoever. You know, trying to claim like, oh, as long as I don't know, I don't care. Type a deal but obviously letting it letting it be known that they don't care what happens not just to the individual but what to their family either which to me is just despicable and i i mean i told graham outright that obviously i back him but for me this was even more egregious than their normal stuff because what anytime doxing comes up now once that's a threat on the table and especially when people's kids are involved i get really pissed off because of what happened to me last year yeah because my kids were involved in that whole doxing campaign against me like i take that very personally right. and uh, i think it's one of the lowest things a human somebody could do like that because that's to- showing total disregard for anybody and trying to act like you're absolved because you're not the one actually doing the dirty work you're just putting the information out there to let other crazy people do it for you yeah that's just messed yeah. up so here's here's the thing like just straight from this a bit let's let's talk about the nap for a second this is like one of the things that really bugs this is not a libertarian like hey let's talk let's determine if everything is a nap violation or not type of show um i i'm, I'm critical of the nap i think you are too Yes. Yeah, from a more like an absolutist position. Like, I think it's a good rule of thumb. Um, but there's a lot of people who will try to make the claim that, like, oh no, if it's not, it doesn't violate the nap. It's 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 not immoral. It's fine. Um, well, if that's the case, then doxing is completely fine because doxing at, at, the, at the the at the root level is is no different than you know copyright infringement. <laughs> it's really like all the arguments that I hear people saying, like, what's well, their information? It's like, what do they own it? Can I own a can I own a song that I write? Oh no. You can only own certain types of information. It's like, come on, let's be let's be a little consistent. Like every argument that I heard, that's even remotely rational, usually is rooted in the same argumentation it is for defending copyright. So, from an eth- from from an ethical standpoint, if if your argument is the NAP is is your only determination if something is good or wrong, or, uh, right or wrong, then it's okay to dox people, which I think is is, is gross. I think it is fucking gross. <laughs> so that's <laughs> and I did a video on it. If you want to look it up, look for Jim Jesus Archives. Um, was it Jim Jesus Archives? Doxing is not theft. If you want to hear my full 
uh, argument against uh, you know doxing is not a crime type of thing. Go ahead and leave there. But it's gross. Like, don't get me wrong. It's gross. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that that aside, <laughs> that's probably the only time <laughs> I'm ever going to nap hard on my show. <laughs> but <laughs> it's fucking disgusting uh, when people dox people. It's another thing to say, like, okay, well, let's dox this person and get their personal information out there, which is bad. It's another thing to say, not only are we going to do that, but we're going to use that information to get them fired from their job, to potentially harm them in real life, uh, to uh, to destroy their, their reputation in town, um, and do all these terrible things intentionally, you know, with, with, you know, with malicious intent. That's where it, that's where it even crosses into another step where you're like, okay, that now these are like nap violations apparently. Uh, it's basically fraud and and uh, threats of violence. I think that's mm-hmm. fair. Okay, so I've been tra- trying to say for quite some time that Adam Kokesh is not a libertarian. It's it's hard for anyone to say like, well, libertarianism means uh, following the non-aggression principle all the time, and then turn like and and. and Fraud is a form of coercion, and you should never ever do it while trying to scam people out of money every moment that he can. <laughs> <laughs> now this is like okay. Now it's just not fraud. Now we're actually talking about threats of violence. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, and potential yeah. acts of violence. You know, via proxy, I guess. Um, so yeah. Um, not a fan of Kokesh, but anyways, I asked Brian Sovereign about this. Did, are you a, are you a Patreon of his? I I am not. I do listen to his show every week, but I'm not. A, I'm not a patron. I'm a little, uh, you know, in a little bit of tight spot with money right now. So, understandable. Um, dollar for dollar, Brian Sovereign's Patreon is the best deal in town. <laughs> it really is. So I've heard. <laughs> he produces content fucking massively like he has like a like a series of diff- great audiobooks one of which was a um a book that i ended up buying a hard cover of because of it called um the occult technology of power by the transcriber it's an anonymous book and it's supposed to be kind of like a um what's 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 the term a satire <laughs> i don't know I, maybe i should know what that term is considering that i do so much satire um <laughs> <laughs> of the uh, the protocols of the elders of zion uh, but the difference is, instead of blaming everything on the Jews, it's about these mysterious power brokers that are using everybody's own self-interest uh, uh, to to promote themselves. It's a really interesting book. You can read it online for free. But Underworld Amusements um, has a great copy of it. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note of it to to, to put a link for that. Cult technology. Um, to, to put a link to that. Um, it's a it's a fantastic read. I was going with that. Anyways, yeah, oh yeah. So I asked Brian Sovereign because he does a weekly Q and A on his on his Patreon show about this, and he said, you know, considering some of the things that I've heard from celebritarians, not just Kokesh, um, they're they're not that. This is not that off the wall of a claim to, to be making against any celebritarian at all. Uh, he said, like, there's there's a few of them that aren't really good, um, or that are really good. Uh, they wouldn't do something like this, but the vast majority would. Um, and and his his reasoning for it makes a whole lot of sense. Not just in fact that he that he's experienced them seeing them do st- shit like that, but the idea that like, hey, let's promote me and let's talk about all the things good that I'm doing, and let's only talk about me. And they're big big bass of egoists, egotists, not egoists. I wish they were egoists. Um, egotists, <laughs> and they um and and because their you know their income relies upon them being seen as almost infallible. When someone comes along to criticize them, it doesn't, and, and it hurts them financially. It, it would not um, cross their their mind to do something terrible like this to stop them. You know, they could justify it in their mind as like, "Oh, well, I'm being defrauded because they're criticizing me and they're wrong." Um, that's defrauding me of money, right? Yeah. So they they could be viewed as that, but I'm sorry, no one's immune from criticism, not even bad criticism. Yeah. Like when someone calls you a pedophile supporter for saying no, that's, that's just <laughs> possession. That's not solicitation. They're both terrible. You should both rot in a jail cell. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. I'm talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to like hire infosec hackers to come after them. I'm not going to dox this this uh, this person at all. 
Yeah. Maybe the person that they're working with will dox him later. That's another story. Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it, it does not at the realm. And I did a podcast on my on my Patreon because I'm, I'm getting back into the swing of doing driving podcasts again um, after my year long of doing them every fucking day um, where I was talking about like, I, I don't think ostracism works. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't. Well, I, yeah, we, I've been saying that for a while, too. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, I mean, I'm, I'm one of the people who used to but so many people touted as like, you know, the savior. And that's what, you know, oh, yeah, we'll be fine. We're just going to ostracize everybody. Really? You can't even do it now. Yeah. You know, because people like Kokesh are still around despite all the evidence that it keeps getting put out there. Yep. You know, and. Uh, you know whether we're, I don't even care about using the terms alleged. Um, but again, I mean, in this partic- this particular situation with Graham and everything, I mean, obviously the only actual evidence we have is directly linked to Farmer, mm-hmm. um, and they're of you know. But the fact that everybody was quiet about it for a while, despite Graham putting it out there regularly, going, "Hey, somebody want to explain yeah. this? Hey, somebody want to say something about this?" And there was no word from anybody. And I think finally somebody from Kokesh's team finally responded to him. Um, but they're basically they're basically claiming that this Little was man Farmer from out Japan. Or- yeah, they're they're basically claiming this is Farmer out on his own, and you know he's no, oh, oh, no longer saying, with oh, the campaign. Oh, they're um, saying that now. Yeah, okay, so I this saw is, this some. Is a new I, update. I have not been following. Go on. I saw. Yeah, I saw some uh, more uh, post from Graham with uh, more screenshots from somebody. I forget the guy Jacob something or other who's apparently with the campaign now, uh, claiming that he did respond to Graham and saying that the, you know they have nothing to do with this. This was Ben acting on his own. Okay. Ben's no longer with the campaign. Blah blah blah. I'll take it. Um, yeah, I mean I'll at least it. it's I'll something. It. But I'll take it. Because it's, it's it's at least something. <laughs> well, yeah, because they they were they were quiet for a while, yeah. and you would think if these were false allegations uh, at all, because plenty of people have claimed that you know he, Graham just could have screenshot, you know, he could have photoshopped all this stuff himself, and sure he could have, but it just it seems to fit in line with everything else we know. And I never thought about it in terms of what you're talking about, uh, what Brian said uh, about, you know, that this is not definitely not out of the realm of possibility, not just for Kokesh, but of plenty of these celebritarians. Yeah. I never thought of it in those contexts, but he's probably right. Like it, yeah. it makes, it makes total sense. Cause I've seen other people do this before. So why wouldn't more of them be doing it? But that, but know. really that's all we were ever asking for was just like for them to make some sort of statement saying, either that they disavow this person or to say that like it's not connected with them somehow or or at least give some substantial proof that maybe these screenshots and and videos were edited and fabricated something something substantial to prove them wrong like one of those three would have been fine we got one i'm fine yeah but the fact that it took this long and and for and for them to lose this amount of money and to get all this kind of backlash whatever uh that's that's really concerning i have my doubts <laughs> just I, say I, I have my doubts but i do as well <laughs> yeah, that's that's all that's all i ever wanted so i guess we can sort of wrap this up but i still think that there needs to be something else kind of like explaining like what was what if any was kokesh's involvement in this it's entirely yeah. possible that ben farmer was acting like a rogue, rogue agent who was saying like well, you know, my boss was is you know losing a lot of money, and if he loses money, potentially I could be n- not getting paid for things in the future. And Kokesh is known for not paying employees, uh, yeah. <laughs> so maybe he saw that and and try to take matters into his own hand. I don't doubt that, but considering Kokesh's kind of history, um, I also I'm still pressing X to doubt in in some respects. <coughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. But yeah, it's, I don't know, the whole, the whole thing is just ridiculous, because there's still just so many people out there that just jump to defend him, no matter what. And that's just something to be the saddest about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, obviously, I like Graham, but I don't want anything, anything happening to him, as, him, him or his family. And I mean, he didn't seem super, I mean, he's he's upset about it, but he, he at first he said to me, he's like, well, at least, you know, I'm all the way in Japan, and what could they really do to me? And, you know, I was the one who unfortunately had to point out to him, like, dude, that's the problem with doxing. It's not even them. Like, right. oh, the whole, the, my biggest problem with doxing is you're putting that information out there, and then all it takes is one crazy person who does happen to be in your area, who may not have, who may not have a dog in the fight whatsoever, who just takes a hold of the information, is like, oh, good target for me. Yeah, there's lots <laughs> you know? of people that are just like, I'll, I'll, I'm just bored. I don't even care about this libertarian stuff. Oh, someone exactly. got doxed. Let's fuck with them. Well, yeah, there's lots of people it's, like that. 
So yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I we'll we'll see we'll see what else comes of this. But. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what else comes of this. But if that's if that if they finally got around to doing that, I am sort of content. I would like to see something coming from the from Kokesh himself saying like I I, I disavow. I disavow, I disavow. That would be great too. I have not seen that. I don't know if yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen. I mean, it's possible that I, does exist. I don't know, but he has said that. Like, I don't. I don't, I don't know how to respond to this cra- uh, crazy allegations or, or the hysteria or something like that. That's what he did respond. That was like his only response so far on Twitter that I was aware of. Um, haven't been following it in recent days because I've been busy with my new show, which I which I'm really happy recording in progress. Jim Jesus Two, Electric Boogaloo on YouTube. Go <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, moving along, have you heard about this? Be- Speaking of scams, have you heard about this BetterHelp thing? I we need to talk no. about this. Uh, this is kind of like I know I, I, I t- we talked about it on on, on this other show that I did, uh, and it's important to also bring it up on this at least once. Um, so there's this um, thing that's being promoted by YouTubers and podcasters. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's a list on Kiwi Farms, which probably not the best place in the universe, but it's an interesting forum nonetheless. If you love making fun of lol cows, um, speaking of doxing, they they also dox people, which is probably not good, but whatever. They have <laughs> they have a list of like a hundred or so YouTubers. A lot of them are like you know of the million you know mark kind of subscriber base YouTubers, like big 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 okay. big YouTubers. Boogie, um, Philip DeFranco. Um, I'm sure you heard of these people, Boogie two two nine eight or whatever. Which now he's yeah, going, sure. I guess now people are saying Boogie fourteen eighty eight. Well, that's a whole different thing, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> um, you know the, the the fat guy that goes around pretending he's Francis and blends Mountain Dew and che- uh, Doritos. Have you seen this? Okay, I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. But you probably don't. I don't know. No, I, I actually I, I I really don't watch YouTube like hardly ever. Okay. Because for the longest time, I didn't have a, I didn't have an unlimited plan on my phone, so I just never had the opportunity to watch anything. Okay. There's a great podcast, and I'm, I'm not, I'm. Let's just put this out there. There's like maybe one or two people that I would subscribe, uh, ascribe malice to. Well, not maybe not malice, but ill intentions to, regarding this. People who are kind of like doing this huge giant narrative on YouTube and kind of linking to each other's YouTubers. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple of those people. But I think the vast majority of people who are promoting this product do it for the best intentions, and okay. not just not just financial reasons because they are getting paid for per subscriber. But I think they actually do think they're using a good service, and they do think that they're pr- promoting it for a good cause. They think you know spreading the the help of therapy is a good thing. So this this is an app called BetterHelp. You pay like sixty five dollars a week or something along those lines, and you have unlimited access to uh, a therapist. Um, you can talk to at any time that you want. It's kind of like Netflix, but for therapy, for mental health therapy. And there are certain things that they don't cover, like they don't cover like addiction stuff, but they'll do things like depression or you know just someone just to, to help them through like daily living, but no major major stuff. Just basic run of the mill talk therapy, right? Okay. Okay. Um, and a lot of YouTubers were promoting the stuff. Uh, there was a few of them who were doing things like, uh, they, they, they had this girl who just like reached like the million mark subscriber count or whatever. And once she got there, she had this, uh, totally real and I'm scare quoting cause I don't know if it's real or not, uh, breakdown on YouTube where she was freaking out saying like, I'm, I'm tired of all the stress of having this large YouTube channel, la la. And then people made video responses to that saying, Hey, you know, like this, this, this video is sponsored by better health. And let's talk about why YouTubers are so depressed. And then later that same woman came out and said, Hey, you know, like I know that I've been dealing with the stress stuff, but I've been, been helped out and I want to help you guys out in the process. That's why I'm giving you this tool called better help. And everybody else is kind of following <laughs> on top of it, giving better help, better help, better help. Well, um, someone actually went through the terms of service and found some very scary fucking things in the terms of service that should be like giant red flags. One of which oh, really? is, they don't. Uh, the they put the onerous and the responsibility of making sure that the that the therapist that you are talking to is a licensed professional on you. That they make no warranties and no claims that these people have any um, cr- uh, credentials whatsoever. They do, wow. but the, the terms of conditions say that they don't. 
<laughs> that's that's one thing. Um, there's a YouTuber by the name of Agent of Doubt, good guy, um, who actually is a mental health therapist who was considering working for BetterHelp, but they one they weren't taking addiction counselors, and that's what he specializes in. And they also pay like fifteen bucks an hour, which that's uh, a bit concerning considering that like there's rules in place saying like how much therapists can be paid. Right, uh, they have to be paid over a certain amount for for ethical reasons. Um, so there was that. Uh, the fact that they were saying that we reserved the right to sell your personal private information to third parties and to do it with do, do what we uh, as we wish while pretend uh, while saying that they're HIPAA compliant. Wow. Um, and the other thing is that they um, that they that they they don't um, what was it they don't they they don't make any any, any claims <coughs> excuse me they don't make any claims that they can help you choosing a therapist but those are the three things that they are like priding themselves on like we offer licensed mental health professionals we will connect you to a mental health therapist that it's good for you and you know and we're HIPAA compliant. All three wow. of those in the terms of conditions say they don't do. So it's like, what are they doing exactly? The other thing is that they're saying like, this is, these are actual mental help, uh, mental, uh, uh, sorry. They're, these are mental health professionals and you can use them for mental, uh, mental ther- uh, for therapy. Problem is when you read the terms of condition, it says actually, um, <laughs> this should be used in tandem with face-to-face therapy and should never be used as a substitute for actual therapy. Wow. So that's the fourth thing. The other thing is people also complain that they can't get refunds, uh, that they would sign up for the service, they would try to contact a, um, a therapist, the therapist would flake on all of their appointments. Uh, one lady was uh, saying that there was lots of misspellings in their, in their, in their communications when they were setting up an appointment. And she was she found that concerning, and then he kept flaking. And when people were asking for uh, a refund, they were not getting it. Uh, you you can't pay, you can't get just a week of service. So with that whole thing about like oh he's sixty five bucks a week, so people would sign up thinking they were only going to pay sixty five bucks, but they would end up paying for an entire month, which is over two hundred dollars. Uh. So there's like all these things that are happening <laughs> with BetterHelp, and everybody's kind of going like, oh crap, we screwed up. Let's back up. Uh, and everybody's pretty much pulled their sponsorship from this company right now. <laughs> their stocks have tanked. <coughs> wow. Excuse me. Their stocks have tanked like 20% in the last week after all these allegations started coming out. So, yeah, there's a, a great podcast called Workationing. This is how I kind of first found out about it, even though I've been listening to a stream called The Kilt Stream. I'm sure you haven't heard of it, so I'm not even going to ask. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> they started bringing this up, but I, I didn't get to that part of that particular episode when they did. Um, but I first heard about it through MK's podcast, Iconosass, because they had the workationing people on and they were talking about better help. Then when I did listen to the kill stream, it was like, whoa, weren't they just promoting this on MK's podcast? So I ended up doing a podcast. There was a few things that were incorrect about it. Um, I'll say that off the bat, but still most of the stuff on there is really fucking concerning. Um, so stay away, <laughs> stay away <laughs> until we get some solid answers, at least from better helps, uh, service because they're, yeah, there's also some ethical issues to delve into that. But what, what do you think about what, at least what I've told you? Cause you know, you're not verifying the stuff. You're just believing my word at the moment. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. No, that's pretty crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I mean, I, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense though. Cause nobody ever reads the terms of service anymore for anything. People just, you know, most people just, most people just check off. I mean, it is really scummy, especially if it is, um, you know, if this was done intentionally, you know, just to try to scam people out of money. Yeah, it's pretty scummy because, you know, people, uh, obviously, if they were getting enough business, it means that there's enough people out there that think they need some kind of help, but maybe don't think they can afford, you know, going through, I guess, more traditional methods. Yeah. And uh, so, it, you know, it'd be a form of fraud. So it's a form of fraud. So I have a problem with that, obviously. Uh, but it just it does it does seem kind of weird, though, that it, like they're that blatant about it. <laughs> like It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, we do this. And then you, you read the fine print. No, no, we don't. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> you know? here's what I think is really happening. I think that they really do try to get a good service in there. I know that they dug through like the list because, you know, autism on the Internet. They've dug through the list of all these mental health professionals that they have listed on their site. 
And it turned out one of them wasn't accredited, and one was like a pedo- like a, uh, a convicted child molester. Okay. And I guess after that was pointed out, they they removed them from their site, possibly from their service. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, they do. Um, like the, like the 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 agent of doubt guy, the the therapist that I was talking about earlier, he said that no, he that he was vetted, that they actually did check his credentials. So there okay. is that at least that there there is some evidence that they are at least attempting to vet them, but I think they're not doing a very good job or they don't have faith in their job. Yeah, Cause you know, eventually people will slip through cracks no matter what. So I can't really blame them a hundred percent, but I think what they ended up doing was they just found a terms of service from some other company or because they, they are, they are a holding company. So they have other services that they also provide too, that are similar to that. Just not for mental health. I forget some of the other ones that they do. One, oh, one of them's for psychics. Mm. <laughs> so you can have access to a psychic anytime that you want. Yeah, that's that's helpful. That, that's that's encouraging. Um, and I think they just took the terms and, and conditions from those, and then retrofitted what they needed into that. Not realizing that no, you're dealing with the mental health service. It's like you can't put people's information through an AI. You can't put people's information uh, in, into third parties or sell and sell them off to third parties. That's not HIPAA compliant. And there's some people that are making some really wild claims about BetterHelp uh, saying that, like, well, they're not doctors, right? Because they're just mental health professionals. They just have certain licensures. That means that they don't have to comply with HIPAA. I work at a nursing facility, okay? The janitors have to comply with kids. Yeah. <laughs> so that that doesn't fly. I mean, there's certain things that people are, are reclaiming about it that, that didn't make a whole lot of sense. But just the fact that they're saying that, hey, we'll sell your personal information when you're talking about mental health services, that's sh- no, sign out. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah, pe- people don't read EULAs. They just go, okay, whatever. Um, but, you know, hey, you, you check off a EULA without reading it. Next thing you know, you're basically being, uh, uh, you're basically Steve's job's human centipede. Well, I think we all seen that episode <laughs> of South Park. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so they eat the cuttlefish. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Please read the fucking eula. I'm sorry. When it comes to mental health stuff, that's probably the one eula you want to agree. Uh, agree yeah, you want to agree to, to at least read for before you agree. Yeah, I mean, I'm just as guilty as anybody else for skipping through a huge portion of the eulas I come across in my daily, you know, my daily travels. But yeah, there's certain things you may, you may. It was funny too because I can't even remember now. They're just they're just like last week, I was saying I was I had to sign something, and I actually sat there and read it. And the there was a whole bunch of people that was like looking at me confused because I wasn't signing the piece of paper right away. And it's like, yeah, you know, what? just I may want to read what's in here first, just just in case. But I don't know. I guess it's a foreign concept to most people. Yeah, like I, I, when I was uh, signing my, uh, I do this every time I get a lease. Uh, but I got an, a lease on a new apartment complex, um, and I was they we were they were going through the contract and they were just saying like, okay, this is what this means, this is what this means, this is what it means, just initial, 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 and sign. And I was going, okay, hold on. Um, okay, because like I can scan pretty well. Like I can scan to see if there's certain clauses in there that that are concerning, and so I'm just looking looking for those. Um, but yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. Please fucking read what you signed for fuck's sake. <laughs> like even if you don't have the help of a of a lawyer, you should probably at least give it a good, good just good, just good once over. At least a good scan yeah. before you sign on the dotted line, especially when it comes to mental health services. Please, please, please. So I'm 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 hoping that. I know there's a lot of issues with this, and the big one that can't be overlooked is there's a huge ethical question. On one hand, you have people who are uh, being given a free trial of this service, right? So there's a relationship between, and then later they're paying for the service, but there's a relationship between the person advertising the mental health services and um, and then pr- getting that same service from that same provider, that 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 is a established ethical conflict in the middle in the American Psychological uh, Association's guidelines. That that because hmm. you're creating a, there's 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 a conflict of interest now where you're saying like I want you to try the service that I'm that I'm using, you know, and I, and I'm getting money for that service. So you can kind of see there's there's a big ethical concern there when you're talking about mental health stuff. Real big oh, yeah. ethical concern that can't be overlooked that that part has to go <laughs> they either have to say like 
you can either be a service with us and get money for it, or you can be a client. You can't be a you can't be a, you can't be the president of the hair club for men and also be a customer, <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't be both. I did steal Sorry, I, size did, I did steal that comparison from uh, Agent of Doubt. I want to give credit where credit's due. I'm not a hack, um, but anyways, yeah. Uh, so you can kind of see where there's a conflict of interest there. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So I, I'd say steer clear from it from now. Um, I, I I do like the idea idea of it it's it's not a bad idea but it has to it has to be like um it has to be on top of face-to-face counseling i'm sorry you have you got to have face-to-face counseling i'm sorry it, I, I don't i don't see how remote mental health counseling would really be that effective i really don't especially when you're treating people like boogie who has like a history of uh like suicidal tendencies yeah. 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 So. I mean, I guess you you think like, you know, maybe some basic stuff you could just talk to, you know, just yeah, like yeah. you would talk it over or talk it over with a friend over the phone or something. But yeah, more in depth stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, like you said, it, the, the, the idea sounds great. You know, basically, you know, I'm all about Uber, Uberizing all the things anyway. So, you know, um, but just not Uber itself, please don't install that app. Don't do it. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't recommend that either, but, um, <laughs> lift, but, you know, the, lift all the things about that. Lift all the, th- yeah. okay. That's fine. That, that works too. Uh, either way, <laughs> don't uh, arcade city, all the things for fuck. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely don't do that. <laughs> uh, but, but what should we call it? The uh, like I said, I, the, the idea in general, yeah, it's great. But definitely, d- definitely don't claim in any way, shape, or form <laughs> that people can just use this and be perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, you it's, know, but, just just like anything else, uh, advertise it as a supplement. Yeah, I, I'm sure. And, like uh, you're better off. I'm sure for someone like me, it would be perfect because my issues really aren't like really deep seated issues. Like my problem is one, I'm an asshole. I could talk to someone over the internet to be less of an asshole, but I don't want to, I like being an asshole. The other thing is like I have attention deficit disorder. So for someone to like help me like remember to do things, to have a routine and to help me get in the mental mind frame of being in a routine regularly. And that will help me kind of cope with, with that along with medication that I'm getting, um, from my doctor, like Stratera or Adderall, I, I'm, I'm against Adderall type things. I, I'd rather take Stratera because it's I'm, I'm not not a big fan of taking anything that's related to methamphetamines. Considering how many friends and family members I've seen go down the shithole in that thing, I, I don't even want things remotely related to it. <laughs> Which I mean, Vicodin scare me. Um, <laughs> like I really am like legitimately like I gotta take Vicodins. Uh, only I guess if the pain is bad enough, I'll take it. A type of attitude when it comes to opioids. Um, but unless it's kratom. But ah, fuck. Now we. Have, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've already been down that rabbit hole many times. Uh, anyways. So yeah, like so something like that. That could that I could be seeing. But if I was having depression, uh, probably not a good idea. Probably <laughs> probably want to get like some. Uh, really, really good services, face-to-face services. I'm sorry, but yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, I advertise it as a supplement, not as a, not not yeah. as a, not as a, not as a solution, or, or a rather, not do both. Not say, oh, it's rather. just a, it's just a supplement to actual face-to-face counseling, and then pay YouTubers to say, oh, it's it is a, it is a replacement, it is a substitute. For yeah, us. exactly. Oh, yeah, that's definitely kind of kind of shady. Yeah. Um, but like you said earlier, the way the way you described it with the different services and like they, maybe they just didn't take it into consideration. They're sure that's definitely a possibility, but you know. Yeah. Uh, j- just like with the other situation, I guess we'll just wait and see, right? <laughs> see what the response is. Yeah, I'll just wait till they get investigated because I guess they're under investigation now. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Not a big fan of the government, but you know, until we get to LibPair, where there actually is independent services that verify these these organizations <laughs> and test them, um, this is what we're stuck with, um, unfortunately. Yep. And they have a monopoly over over those services. It, it always drives me crazy when people go like, "You should never call the cops." It's like, well, yeah, you should never call the cops, but there's certain circumstances where you don't really have much choice, right? You, you kind of yeah. got to. Uh, <laughs> don't dial 911, though. Dial, was it 311 or whatever? Uh, probably a better option. But like, there's certain things where, like, if you're going to make an insurance claim, you have to have a police report. Unfortunately, yep. that's the way the world works. Yeah. Yep. There are. Yeah. I don't want to have to call cops, but fuck. 
fuck you for making me. <laughs> like, you stole my shit. That's that's bad. But what the worst thing about it is, you had to make me fall the, fucking call, fall, call the cops, <laughs> file a fucking report, asshole. <laughs> Fuck you. Anyways, so that just makes it a double nap violation. <laughs> 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 well, that means I could shoot them, right? <laughs> they exactly. Stole the, they exactly. Stole, they stole a paperclip. Yes. <laughs> Back my, give me back, Mister Clippy, you bastard. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> Clippy. <laughs> so, um, how how was how was your uh, how was your uh, did we did we update Legal Land stuff? Because I know you had a major update, but I don't know if we covered it last time. Because yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't even remember the last time we recorded it was. It was a while back, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if we didn't get to it, then uh, it's pretty much over. I I took a plea deal, cause uh, ah never take the plea. Yeah, well, I I ended up proving my point uh, more so than I could have ever imagined actually, because my whole point originally was that they were they would be willing to waste money on absolutely nothing just to try to punish me somehow some way, and uh, I got to drag it out for over a year and a half, um, you know, like eighteen something court appearances. Uh, and, uh, in the end, my lawyer did manage to talk them all the way. Like originally their original offer was something ridiculous, like a week of anger management and, uh, like a hundred, I think it was 150 hours of community service to start with. Um, and a bunch of fines and playing into a whole bunch of stuff. And in, in the end, he got it all the way, all the way down to like 35 hours of community service, one day of anger management class, which I actually just did last weekend, and God, was that a joke? Um, and uh, here's a question: Does killing furries qualify as community service? Uh, in my mind, yes. Unfortunately, the town has to sign off on whatever wow. I do, so I have a feeling uh, they would probably say no. And uh, oh, I don't even think there are that many furries on Long Island, at least. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I also have to do the service there too. They're, they're all they're all in their in their rooms raping dogs. <laughs> oh boy! Should we talk about Kiro? Maybe we should talk about Kiro. Who? <laughs> the what? Crew. We'll talk about that. Go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> community <Okay>. service. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so yeah, I, I I still have to get that done. But yeah, so once I once I once I finish up my service, I'm officially done with the case and uh, I can move on with my life and uh, you know I'm not going to move anywhere exactly yet because I'm still going to be on the road with Murder Dog for as long as I can be but you know that was fun but the anger management man dude that was so so ridiculous first of all they charge you $165 for the class you have to you have to pay to take the class and of course how there's does only that one make you feel but oh, yeah, uh, made me ang- made me angrier than when I started, uh, and then. Uh, <laughs> and, and how does that make you feel? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was it was really. I mean, well, I mean, l- luckily it was. I mean, it was like I said, it was a joke because we were. I was told originally it was like an eight hour class. You get there, they tell you, oh no, it's only number one. It's only six hours, and then there's an hour for lunch, plus another fifteen minute break in there somewhere. Uh, the the lady who who ran it was kind of old and moved really really slowly so she didn't actually even get started until like half an hour in into it and then actually signed our papers and kicked us out half an hour early so (laughs) i only had to spend like three hours of an actual class type setting but i was just still angry because i i I was charged for that you know and i had to waste an afternoon uh although i did get to uh i did get to talk about my uh my experiences i found out there i don't think there was any necessarily anarchists in the group but pretty much everybody there seemed to hate the cops a whole lot <laughs> i heard the words terrorists uh mafia thrown around a lot wait, wait, wait you're telling me that people with anger management issues uh hate hate people who <laughs> fuck with uh, them I, I don't believe yeah. it i can't believe it yeah but mo- yeah, but, but most of the people, most of the people in there weren't even like, e- and even even the person who was running the class said at the beginning, half the time when she listens to people's stories, she thinks that the other person should have been in the class, not that person, <laughs> because it's just it's she, even she knows it's a joke, but she's getting paid, so she doesn't care. Yeah, um, you know, because like literally, I heard somebody, you know, some woman was trying to protect her daughter from like a jealous ex, and she like tried to shield her daughter, and the the ex like threw like bleach at her multiple times, and when she finally turned around to confront the woman, she ended up getting uh, she 
ended up getting arrested. You know, multiple stories like that. You know, kind of stuff like me defending my own property. I'm the one who's arrested. <laughs> and, and then they ask you. Then they act all condescending with you while you're explaining your story. And how does that make you feel? You, you know what? They didn't even do that though, oh, which was great. Okay, great. Yeah, no. Like I said, the woman, who, the, the woman who, the woman who ran it was actually pretty cool. She kind of let us run things, and we kind of took control. There was like twenty of us, and did, uh, you did, know, we laughed and had a good time, made the best out of it. But, but it was still in the end, we all walked out like motherfucker. We still had to spend one hundred sixty-five dollars for this stupid bullshit. <laughs> Did she let you take control because you were scared because you were all angry at her? Yeah. <laughs> like, finally, no, 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 don't hurt me. The don't inmate, don't, the don't hurt me, take, angry people. Don't hurt me. The inmates taking over the uh, asylum, yeah. right? Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's where I am with that stupid thing. Like well, I said, I got, I got I that it's done. It's almost over then, right? Yeah, I just got to finish my 35 hours before I think it's the end of the year. I think I have to. Um, I would have had it done already, but I needed to be out of state for the first month after the trial, after the thing ended anyway, because I was still, I still had my New York license plates. I was waiting for my new plates to come in so I could go back to New York safely. Um, and, uh, what should we call it? And then I have uh, had all the issues with murder dog, so I haven't really got a chance to do it yet. But once I get back from this pet sitting gig, I'm going to try to knock all those hours out. Be done with that crap. Yep. I got to pay for that too, though. All right, yeah, of course. <laughs> I think I think it's a hundred. I think I got to pay him one hundred and fifty bucks. It's something ridiculous. Like they charge you like uh, like basically like five bucks an hour. You got to pay <laughs> to give away your labor for free. No, no, no. You're not giving away your labor for free. You're also you're giving your labor and your money away for free. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. you're giving away your labor and paying for it. That's yeah. what it is. Well, that's how it works now. I remember. Um, I can't remember what what happened. Um, my sister got in trouble at the mall. I think it may have been for shoplifting. Uh, high school stupid shit. She ended up having to do community service, but she didn't have to pay for it. She just had to go down to the library and, and basically, uh, you know, dust all the books off and stuff like that and help kids read. That was pretty much Yeah, it. that's how it used to be. Yeah, now it's like, oh, no, you have to pay for that. You have to pay for the opportunity to teach kids how to read. Yeah, and they and they, they chalk it up to, like, you know, administrative fees. It's such bullshit. Because yeah. <laughs> um, half I, the time, like... I mean, they, they try to make it seem like, oh, you know, it's totally up to you. You can choose where you go. You can even choose some private organization if you want, try to make you feel good about it, which, you know, just bullshit. You still got to pay money, even though they have nothing to do with it. You know, if you're going to like me. I'm trying to get into an animal rescue where I can do mine because at least I'll be doing something that I would want to do anyway. You see, um, there's a lot of people who will go around saying things like, I don't break the law because I think it's the bad thing to do and it makes me feel bad. Some people will say, like, I don't do bad things because I don't want to go to fucking jail. That sounds like a terrible time. Me, I'm none of those people. My problem is I don't want to get fucking community service where I have to teach kids how to read. I fucking hate kids. They're sticky and they ask too many questions. <laughs> Just take me to jail. <laughs> kids are terrible. Sticky and has too many questions. I love that line. What was her name? That was one of the Greens, right? Yeah, I miss them. I do too. They um, were they were fun. <laughs> if, if either of them ever want to have have uh, have a spot on this podcast, there is a fucking wide door open for both or either of them. I've heard things through the grapevine. I don't know if they're true. I'm not going to say them. Um, but I'm sure they know what I'm talking about, but I'll just say if they're true or not, I don't care. I'll take either or both of you. Uh, <laughs> However you want to do this, doors wide open for you guys to be a Lalbert any, any, any fucking day of the week. More than glad. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, sp speaking of the greens, whatever happened to the fiends? Whatever happened. Yeah. Whatever happened to the fiends? Uh, from, like I said, from what I recall correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe this was a show that was quite a sort of daily show. It was like four uh, days uh, a week, and then a replay on Friday. Yeah, it used to be, and then a, well, and then a, and then like a best of on Saturday, something like that. Yeah. Now it's just once a month. <laughs> it's well, and no um, music. What the well, fuck? Yeah, I mean. I don't even remember when it was at this point, but we 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 the, we went off the air eventually. Uh, well, at least the live. We'd stopped doing the live shows. Okay. And uh, you know, it was supposed to be okay. Great. 
everybody's been asking for this for years anyway because most of the hosts were kind of pissed off kind of annoyed of having to get up in the middle of the night to do shows anyway oh, we're staying up really late i, I it. never i never cared i was the yeah. only east coaster who did, i was the only east coaster who didn't give a crap i mean i was like whatever i'm up at 1 a.m anyway i'll do a show whatever yeah. um I'm but everybody else anyway. i yeah. everybody else i understood um but yeah once it finally happened everybody all of a sudden once there was no longer a schedule to keep everybody just like fell off the face of the earth uh you know yeah. lou got super busy uh you know Ran randy's around but he needs other people to do shows with because he's not going to record them or anything uh so that it felt pretty much it was either michael or i that did all the work and since i've been gone for four plus months you know now that i've been on the road you know my, my own my, my own show i stopped doing the seeds of liberty we haven't done an episode in that since i can't remember when uh i, I haven't even even been doing my solo podcast i didn't even notice that I, I, yeah that's right i haven't got any updates for seeds of yeah liberty. i just uh we have we stopped doing everything for i mean we were going through a lot of issues with the seeds anyway because dave kind of disappeared which uh, actually wasn't such a bad thing for most people <laughs> um, <laughs> see here's the thing we, dave was the co-host that i love to hate yeah, yeah, we we get that one too. Uh, we get that a lot. Yeah, um, I mean, like but, I, I was I never objected to him being on the show. Like I I remember I said one, and it was a complete joke, but he took it seriously, and I was like, oh god, come on. <laughs> Where I was just like, hey man, if you need an extra, if you need a replacement, hire me. I was seriously fucking kidding. I did not want to commit myself to another fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I think I was doing the fiends at the time still. Um, and, yeah. I, and, I just, and he was like, ha ha, that'll never fucking happen. It's like, no, I know that, dude. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Dave so, and anyway. By the way, by the way, for just a quick correction, because you did say this a while ago, that I blocked him on Facebook. I did not block him. I just unfriended him, so I just didn't oh. see his stuff in my news feed. Not that it matters anyway, because I basically turned Facebook into my platform to remind people how terrible Facebook is. <laughs> That's all my posts have been. And, and, and yeah. I, I took a, I, I took I took a screenshot of James Weeks' like post because he said like what he I think he said something along the lines of like, um, what was it? Uh, um, libertarianism isn't about hating liberals; it's about hating conservatives. And I was oh, like, yeah. and then I took a screen cap of it and I said, no, actually, it's about deleting your fucking Facebook account because it's destroying your life. And, he, and <laughs> there was a couple people that were like, is that like a, a jab at James Weeks? I was like, no, 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 no. I'm just trying to remind everybody. Look at look at my posts from <laughs> back in the day. It's all been like, delete your fucking Facebook account. It's destroying your life. Or my, you know, I think I, there was a couple of them that was like, my disappointment is immeasurable and my, my day is now ruined. I posted that on the uh, I posted that on the day that Facebook had like 50 million users accounts hacked. <laughs> <laughs> so I like I've been talking nonstop about anytime I'm ever on Facebook like this place is terrible get the fuck off. Like no no beef with weeks. Uh yeah. I, know, I I have beef with weeks. Well, ideological he, beefs, but he's he's a cool guy. He makes it kind of easy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, he's still my I, boy. I, 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 oh yeah, me too. I, I love hanging out. I love hanging out and partying with him. But I, but but I argue with him when I listen to his podcast. I yell at the, I yell at my phone yeah. the whole time. Um, well, not tanky. the whole time, half the time. <laughs> Fucking tanky. Just, just go back to dancing with your thong. Yes, yes. Do what you're good at, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's why the feeds like like I said, it's it's it basically fell on me to do the recordings if Michael wasn't going to do them and I haven't been able to do them. Uh so it's basically just been my most of the shows are Michael and his buddy Phil um talking about poetry and the music that they make or whatever. Um occasionally like Randy and I got to do a show last month cuz I stayed in one place for a long enough time to record an episode, which is, you know, I recorded one today cuz I'm going to be here. I'm actually going to try to get, grab a bunch of people who haven't done shows in forever and see if I can get them in this week. Yeah, uh, I'm actually I, supposed to. I've been fired, so sorry, can't help you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I, would I, I have to, I have to think when I, I have to think when I record podcasts, uh, when, when I when I write to them because I never remember who's still there or not. Yeah. <laughs> I would, not... I would do a fiends episode just so long as I don't have to interact with Michael. I'll be all right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that was the, that was the beauty of it. I, I, I just record them on my end, and yeah. it has nothing to do with it. I just record a show the way I want to do it, and then I hand it to him. Uh, I know like, the fiends are. I know, I know how to do a fiend show. I can even do the intro. I can still, oh. I still remember it. Let me see. 
Uh, this is the Freedom Fiends podcasting uh, podcasting from Pod Bay, uh, broadcasting from Pod Bay Two A, a mile above sea level, the Intergalactic Studio. Ah, fuck, I don't remember it now. Holy shit, I just did it last yeah. night. Uh, I, I I screw it up whenever I actually try to do it because I can't remember this it anymore. This is the Freedom Fiends podcast uh, broadcasting from Pod Bay Two A, a mile above sea level, Intergalactic Prairie Studios. We alter your synapses by re- no. Don't remember it. I need to fucking practice it. <laughs> but I used to say it like at like a thousand words a minute. <laughs> I used yes. to fucking do yes, that whole intro in like ten seconds. And by the time yeah, I was like, did. can you feel it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not even like that anymore, man. I barely we we barely do intros. There's no commercial breaks. You just talk. You just talk for anywhere from like fifty to a hundred and ten minutes, <laughs> and go. Okay, we have a show. Great. <laughs> yeah. No music. Boring. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Bank popped my, my wife's tires today. <laughs> Speaking of vaping. <laughs> oh, man. Are you still on? Are you, were you vaping? Was, was, was is that a thing? I, yeah, I, I do both. I vape and I st- well, I vape, vape, I vape nicotine and I still smoke cigarettes. Um, I'm on this. I don't know if you've noticed, but I did not take one single vape break this entire show, nor last show, nor nice. any of the other shows that I've been doing. Uh, thanks to a wonderful invention called Swedish snooze. Have you heard of this? Uh, yeah, I heard the camel came out with a snooze a couple of years ago, didn't they? I've oh, heard that's not Swedish snooze. But that's what it's that's modeled after. Yeah, sort of. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I could tell that I could talk to the differences between the two. Uh, I'm sure there's differences. That's that's how I know it, though. So okay, important explain. Difference. Okay, so snooze is, is if you kind of think about it in terms of like think about it like like dipping, uh, except for two important factors. Um, one, uh, it is not flame cured; it is pasteurized. Which uh, which is important because it lowers the amount of I forget, I forget what it's called, but basically lowers the amount of carcinogens that are in it, which also leads to part two, which is probably the most important thing, is that you don't have to spit. Therefore, like all the real bad objections people have with with dipping and chewing tobacco, which is like having to spit that nasty black shit out of your mouth every three seconds, you don't have to. Yeah. Do. You just stick it up in your your top upper lip, and then that's it. You don't have to spit uh, because it's pasteurized. Um, you're, you're good to go, and um, that's about it. <laughs> and the, like, there's some taste differences too. It doesn't taste like dip. It, it honestly, it reminds me of like a salty Earl Grey tea. At least that's what the normal ones do, because um, there is like table salt that they put in it, but they also have like oil of bergamot in it. And because tobacco is like a leaf, it has kind of a tea taste to it, and then like that nicotine kind of peppery kind of nic- nicotine type of thing so it's almost like black tea with salt and pepper if you hmm. can imagine what that tastes like it sounds weird but it's it's pretty good they also have them flavored like you can get them in mints um if you get stuff from sweden you can get like a crazy variety of different flavors general is like the one of like a few brands that they that they sell in america that are that's actually swedish schnoose uh, that you can get at like any circle k will have them they have them in little refrigerators because they're not stealth shit Snooze is not stealth, uh, shelf stable. Like you have to keep it refrigerated until you start using it, and then by the time it's done, you'll be all right. But you know, I ah, buy- so then, so then the American stuff is definitely fake because yeah. uh, you see they're just sitting on the on the shelves yeah. in the stores. Well, they do okay, have gotcha. they do have Swedish Snooze that that they call shelf stable, but the general stuff uh, that they have at Circle K, they keep in a little tiny refrigerator behind the counter. Uh, and yeah. I- yeah. But they're also salted too, so like it's it's weird. You would think that it's gross. Like, wait, mint and salt, like a salty mint. Ooh, it no, I'm, tr- trust me, it's good. <laughs> I'm actually starting to like it more than the uh, original. But uh, I, I think I like the original more as of right now. The kind of just a weird oil of bergamot, kind of Earl Grey kind of flavor that it has. Really fucking enjoying it. Hmm. And like, I'll buy a pack of the stuff. Like twenty four portions of little packets, you know, like like dip por- uh, packets. Yeah, have you seen them? They're kind of like that, um, you know. But there's twenty four of them in a pack, and they will last me. Like I've I've had this pack for five days, and I, let's see mm. how many I still have left. I probably have about let's see three, six, nine, ten, eleven. 
Oof, it looks like you cut out. <laughs> I've got about like 11 portions left, even after all that time. Like, I barely go through this stuff at all. General. Yeah, he's still cut out. I'll still talk. <laughs> Gen- general. Um, uh, yeah, it's 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 fairly cheap. Like I said, like it's five bucks a pack. You know, it lasts it lasts a good solid week. I'm just kind of re- saying this all again because Jeremy's fine. Am I back yet? Yeah. Gosh, <laughs> You're all right. Well, uh, all right well, I want to well, now. I, well, I want to ask. All right. So then, uh, so I mean, my biggest aversion to dip it was always the whole spitting thing. Anyway, right. I was just never a fan of it. Um, so you don't have to do that. But I guess I guess I would have to. Ask, the, the first question I guess I would have to ask: Does it, of course, present the same uh, risk of mouth cancer then as okay. regular dip? So on the label, the, the federal government requires that all smokeless tobacco products have the following warnings on them. They're, I think they have three on the Swedish snooze ones. One says this product can cause gum disease and tooth decay. Uh, this product can cause or um, this product can cause mouth cancer. And then the other one says that this product is addictive. Only two of those are false. Uh, and that is the one that's on my can right now that says this product can cause mouth cancer and cause tooth uh, gum disease and tooth loss. Um, there has never been a documented case of anyone getting mouth cancer or uh, tooth decay or gum disease from mm. Swedish New. There's never been a documented case of it. Now, granted that snus is only really popular in Sweden and is now starting to grow in the United States. It's not a very popular product worldwide, so we don't have the documentation nearly as much documentation of it as we do say cigarette smoking but they actually can determine the amount of carcinogens that are in the stuff and it's like they say that it's about the equivalent of a cup of coffee like the the amount of carcinogens that are in a cup of coffee are like slightly more than um you know like a portion of snooze so you know if you're drinking multiple cups of coffee a day you're probably in the Which same ballpark. <laughs> you're probably in the same ballpark. You know, you're just doubling your very, 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 very low risk. So, well, interesting. I, I may have. To, I mean, I keep saying I'm going to get myself off the damn cigarettes, but yeah, maybe so I'll have to look into that. Definitely a whole lot better for you than cigarettes. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, Circle K is the only place that I know that has it. Do they? Do they have Circle Ks out there? Uh, there may be somewhere I am right now, but they're not up in New York. Uh, at least not largely. Yeah, so the, the brand that I'm using, and this is not a plug. I'm not paid by them at all. I'm just a fan, right? I'm not. I'm not trying to better help anybody. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm letting you know there, there, there's definite like, like anything. There's always going to be bad things when you're putting stuff into your body. That's any what medicinal and tobacco, uh, tobacco and nicotine. Nicotine is a is a is a drug, right? It's addictive, yep. and in high doses, it's poisonous. It'll kill you. But you know, like the the medicinal, the, the difference between the poison and uh, uh, medicine is the dose, right? So, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's called General Snooze. You can go to generalsnooze.com, and their they have a their website has like this thing where you can search your area for places uh, that st- sell it. Store lo- store locator. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. they have like a store All locator, right. so you can All go right, and I'll, check. I'll it check out. it out then. I would definitely recommend trying the white. It just says white on it. Just, just white. Okay. Try that one first, and, and if you don't like it, then you can try things like the one. I think they have wintergreen, mint, and mint minis, and the mint minis are basically the same as the regular mint, except they're like half, half as small. They're, so they deliver half the amount of nicotine. It's just for like a little boost, I guess, or people who maybe don't use as much, but whatever. I, I really uh-huh. like nicotine, so or pe- people who smoke Virginia Slim Ultra Lights. Yeah. <laughs> for those types of people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that sort of thing. So I, I've I've been really into this. Um, I, I had a buddy on Twitter that was really big into snooze, and he used to make make his own in a crock pot. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. <laughs> so, um, but he 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 would also be one of those people that would order it online. Now the thing with ordering tobacco online, we can kind of relate this back into libertarianism again. <laughs> is well, one because the label sucks. I mean, it's it's definitely lying to you. Uh, as far as we know, it's lying. Um, the other thing is, so th- they passed a law, I think, in 2009. And I remember this because it had it, it also affected my hookah. Like, I ended up stopped buying hookah online stuff, tobacco and stuff online. is because um, in order for you to, to sell tobacco online and have it shipped to people's houses, you have to use a service that verifies the person that's receiving the package is over 18. There's only yes. one service that does that right now, and that's UPS. And they charge 
at least fucking thirty dollars in order to s dr deliver any of the stuff to your house. So if you do the math to try to make it economical, you'd end up having to buy like hundreds of like hundreds of these packets of stuff. A lot of them aren't shelf stable, so you, you can, and, and like this stuff. I think it says, "Let's see, best before." Oh, I worn it off. That's how long I've had it. I think it <laughs> says November twenty fourth. It says used by no November twenty fourth, and that's probably considering that you're keeping like it in a refrigerator. So you can mm. see where there's some issues, right? Fuck the yeah. government. <laughs> Just let me fucking order it through the ma snail mail, goddammit. Bastards. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a few brick and mortar places. There's some... Th now, the, um, the difference is, like, if you get something like camel snooze or skull mm -hmm. snooze, they're going to... They're basically advertising it not as, like, this is a replacement for smoking, like a lot of snooze's will. Um, it's more like... This is what you use when you can't smoke or you can't dip. And they cut the nicotine like really, really down, really, really low. And they use like, it's like all these stabilizers and stuff in order to keep it shelf, shelf stable for a long period of time without refrigeration. And the consequence is, one, it doesn't taste as good. And two, it doesn't deliver nearly as much nicotine. But, you know, if, if you're using it dual use, right, if you're, if you're dipping while you're at the office and then smoking on your, on your smoke breaks... That's what it's used for. Gotcha. So you have to get the sweetest shit <laughs> in order to, to get proper snooze, apparently, um, uh, which sucks. But um, I get there's there's the general they they've uh, I think there's a couple other brands that started branching out in the United States. They're not really selling them, a lot of them in, in a lot of brick and mortar stores. I think they just released a couple of ones that everybody's really excited for because one of them's like a super strong. It's the first one approved to be sold in the United States. Other than that, you have to buy them. And again, $30 shipping for at least, uh, even if it's, you just buy one can or something like that. That's ridiculous. Especially since they're like five bucks a can or three bucks yeah, a can a lot of times. Yeah. So yeah, fuck the government. Just let us have snooze. Why are you fucking with this all the time? God damn you. And it's all because <laughs> of the label. That's all what it really boils down to is they just want to put the make sure that the label's on there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then it then it follows like food because because you're not spitting it out, it has to be approved by the FDA. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Proving tobacco yes. through the FDA is you know, that's like bull and teeth. <laughs> well, you know. That's that's government for you, always yep. getting in the way of a good time. Yep. Bastards. <laughs> so yeah, if 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 you're smoking, I highly suggest you check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm yeah. I, 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 I'm running low on cigarettes anyway. I had a couple of cartons, but I'll. Uh, I'll look into that. <laughs> well, I, went to, I go to the Indian reservation when I can, man. That's we have an the Indian only reason I keep smoking because yeah. they're super cheap. Yeah, we have an Indian reservation here, and they don't sell snooze products at all, which sucks. Um, I go in there every once in a while. I'm like, "Do you guys have Swedish snooze yet?" And they're like, "What the fuck is Swedish snooze? No, we don't have anything <laughs> like that. No, sorry." But they'll have like the giant like. It looks like a, oh, what is it? Um, like Ben and Jerry's. It looks like a ben, like, a, like a, a pint of Ben and Jerry's, but it's dip. <laughs> like yeah. holy shit, that's a fucking lot of dip. I'm good on that. But no, I go to the Indian Reservation because they have cigars. Oh, and I love uh, cigars. Really good cigars, and they're cheap. Like I can get like a a Drew Estate Java for like six bucks. That's a fucking steal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So nice. <sighs> All right. So, was there anything else we talk? Oh, should we talk about? We should, I, 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 I never finished the story about the, um, the zoo crew, Kirin oh, yeah. zoo crew. I have no idea what that is. There's two videos if you want like an in depth version of it. Uh, it's there's one's called Kiro and the Zoo Crew, and I think the other one is the first one is called A Boy and His Dog. Um, this is like trigger warning. I, th I think this is like the only time I'm legitimately ever going to give a tr like a content warning for something because <laughs> normally I just <laughs> don't care. That we're going to get into some topics about um, things like animal abuse, animal cruelty, and bestiality. So if, you're, uh, stom if your stomach Whoa. can't handle that, this, this, we're going to wrap this episode up with this, and we're not going to talk about anything else <laughs> except for maybe plugging your stuff before we go. Um, <laughs> so what do you know about furries? Um... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're like nothing now. I don't. I'm not sure if I want to. <laughs> I, I I I I don't know. I mean, I've seen them portrayed. Uh, and I don't think I've ever actually met one. I think there's actually a couple of people on my friends list who are. Um, I don't really know them. Time though, to disavow. But, uh, no, I'm not going to say that, that it's all of them. But no, yeah, I'm not a big fan of furries in general. I, I always thought the concept was kind of weird, but I, you know, I just kind of it was kind of one of those things I shrugged off to each their own. But why? What should I? What should I know about furries? <laughs> Okay, so um, furries are kind of like this fandom, right? They're really interested in like drawings of like anthropomorphic animals. A lot of them look kind of like '80s cartoon characters, or maybe like Looney Tunes. Uh, we could probably think um, Bugs Bunny dressing up like uh, like a girl. That's probably where we can blame most of this stuff on. Seems to be yeah. mostly kind of concentrated in like gay and bisexual communities more than anything else. I mean, there's there's just not straight ones, but it seems like the vast majority of the ones I meet. Are LGBTQ, IG, IP, L, L, M, N, O, P, K, Q, S, T, V, whatever. I don't know all the lyrics. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, like, so yeah, it's that. But that's not the problem. The, the, the big kind of problem is some of the other things that they also could be involved with, and a lot of times are. Um, a lot of them are really into things like crinkling, which is wearing diapers and using them as diapers as well, as a sexual hmm. fetish. Um, but apparently there was a, a group of them, I don't know how big it is, but it seems as though there's a lot of them internally who started routing, routing these people out and calling them out. Um, we don't know how how pervasive it is in the community at all, but it seems though a lot of people were trying to keep it under wraps for quite some time, um, where there's definite elements of zoophilia and bestiality. Ooh. And... Apparently, so there was everyone's calling him Kiro and the Zoo Crew. So there's this YouTuber, fur YouTuber called Kiro the Wolf, who allegedly, I need to say allegedly, but I don't know how alleged. This is, I think there's more evidence for this than Ben Farmer for sure. Uh, but <laughs> his, his telegram was hacked, and in the process of it, there was lots of. Um, or no, he's, he's saying that it was hacked, but what, what, it, what happened was his chat logs got released and he tried to lie by saying that his account was hacked by Iranian super hackers um, but that were showing him having conversations with other people talking about things that they did with their dog um, and in, in, in saying that like their dog is now dying because of the sexual assault that, that they were carrying out on these animals. There was videos being produced of them having sex with not just dogs, but roadkill. Uh, they were really wow. big on like finding roadkill and having sex with it, even no matter how small it is, basically using small animals as fleshlights. God damn it. Jesus. Disgusting stuff. There's videos that you can go and find right now of them doing it and people trying to, the people are going through all those videos and connecting the dots and going like, okay, let's compare this to a video that Kiro did on his YouTube channel and say like, yep, that's his wall. That's his chair. That's his sofa. That's, that's definitely his dog. You know, they have the same thing. Like, you can tell, like, that's his leg. You know, like, people are trying to piece together things and try to show, like, yes, this is this is this person, this is this person. So it's pretty clear that this this person was alleg uh, <laughs> allegedly involved. <laughs> pretty clear they're allegedly involved, right? <laughs> I think that's legally. Ob <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll keep me out of hot water. <laughs> you yeah, so, that, I don't, good that, luck. You, I guess there's already a police investigation surrounding the stuff. Um, just really nasty, disgusting things. Um, in the community, and it was it looked like they were there was being kind of covered up for quite some time until uh, someone found out about it. Released all, you know, re they released the documents, and now we're finding out all this gross, disgusting stuff with Kiro the Wolf. And it's not just Kiro; there's a bunch of other ones as well. But Kiro the Wolf is probably the most prominent one, and that was the one, the first one that started getting exposed. Oh, as an animal lover of the good variety, that's, that's horrible, man. <laughs> And as, and as someone who attends tanker management, how does this make you feel? <laughs> Not good, Jim. Not good at all. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't it. like this. Yeah. Not, I don't like it. Not one bit. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it's just messed up, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I always thought people that were in, like, even the, what is it, the stuff in Tijuana, the donkey shows, I always thought that was just fucked up, man. Like, why are you torturing those poor animals like that? I think that? that's actually mostly a myth, uh, the donkey shows. 
Oh, okay. I've well, been whatever. to Tijuana a couple of times. All right, so the whole idea of yeah, it yeah, kind yeah. of like was just kind of like you know what, like what the hell, man? Really? Like I, I don't know. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm I I I'm not going to say that I may or you know I I'm, I haven't made like you know. Richard Gere hamster joke in the past or anything, um, but you, did, it, you, you know, did you, get, did you get a chuckle at the end of Clerks too when they had the donkey show? I I did okay. I did I did, but um, you're complicit. <laughs> I, yeah, I I am I'm horrible I'm I'm part of the problem, um, but in general yeah it's uh, other than when it's being used specifically for comedic purposes, um, the whole idea of it it's is, okay to abuse animals so long as it's for comedic purposes you can yeah you know that. you know <laughs> come on. No actual donkeys were hurt in the uh, okay, so filming of that movie. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the whole idea. <laughs> There's so much great out of context yeah. stuff that we pulled from this conversation. <laughs> I'm going to be crucified on the internet all over again. Yeah, yeah. What, anyway. What, what, whatever happened to out of context fiends and out of context lullbirds? Come on. Get on it, Travis. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Michael pissed Travis off enough that he quit too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a super fan quit yeah. um, <laughs> he wasn't even on the show and he, I know. Already, and he already quit <laughs> he was just the he was just the resident meme guy um but yeah so uh yeah it's just that's messed up man like i said I, i've heard some of these like stories or whatever like i never bothered to investigate it but like you're saying i mean <laughs> it doesn't sound like allegedly even is necessary at this point that's just fucked up dude yeah. <laughs> Yiff and hell, Ugh. yiff and hell fur fags. Sorry, what the hell, man? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't stand them. Can't stand them. Can't stand them. There's there's a couple, there's a couple in my Discord that are pretty cool. So far, they've been pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But well, I don't know. I mean, for, for what you're saying is like, I mean, pretty but, cool. Is this is this like another Catholic uh, church but, situation where it's like, yeah, not all of them are doing it, but they've been covering up for everybody for the whole fucking time. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, is that what we're talking about here? That's kind of messed up. We'll, we'll see if they're they're implicated in these chat logs somewhere. I'm gonna start seeing their names popping up. I'm not gonna mention any names. I'm not gonna mention any names, but you know who you are. Uh, it's a bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, um, but yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, th- this this is this is like extremely upsetting. And this is a great way to end the show because today, because yesterday, I learned you open your show or you close your show on rape. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned yesterday. Apparently, this this is this is effective podcasting. You end or start your show with rape, you're good to go. Well, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so don't 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 do terrible things to your dogs. If you hear people doing terrible things to their dogs, re- say something. I don't even care if you call the cops. Just just say something. To get it out there. This is ridiculous. Why why is this a thing? And I guess this kind of ties back into the other thing. I guarantee you, if there was a big kind of community in the furry community where they were ripping each other off, if that was a big thing, which by the way, there, there is some element just truth to that. Um it's it's kind of true in almost any any, of the, any kind of group, um, libertarians especially. There's um, if, you know like people get exposed as being like a fraud or a scam artist or being really shitty to you know their spouse or their their significant others or oh they're their, a dog fucker. No, no, no. Hold on, wait, wait for this. I don't not not the dog fucker thing. If they're um. You know, just just like just generally terrible, or they say things that are just blindingly stupid with authority. Like uh, I don't know, inter- like high interest rates causes businesses to take out more loans and causes <laughs> bubbles. You could say that you can; those people will be just fine. You can expose them all you want. You can say whatever the fuck you want about them. But the, I think the only time you ever get in a situation where ostracism of people actually does work it's when it's it's things like fucking animals fucking children raping and obvious first degree murder and it can't just be like oh i got mad and like killed my wife it was like i killed her and then i smeared her blood all over the wall to make the words helter skelter unless it's something like that like most people will forget about it in a couple days 
and I, and oh, okay. I, I, and I know that yeah. there's like a lot of people who say like, yeah, it's just pointless talking about this stuff all the time. You should be working to build yourself up. And I know Brian Sovereign says that. And to an extent, I agree. That's kind of one of the reasons, and he, I was doing this before he even said that, you know, talking about more things like pop culture and that sort of thing and kind of focusing on, on that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I think there should be an outlet somewhere out there that's talking about these things because libertarians are kind of under the delusion that like, oh, you know, these, these are libertarians. I should be able to trust them because they agree with the non-aggression principle. It's like, well, they say they do. But there's a lot of people in any and it's not just libertarians. It's in every other community. Um, you know, people get kind of starry eyed about their own group and the in group and they go, oh, OK, these people are fine. They're not going to harm me. It's like, no, you have to be skeptical of everybody, including your own, especially your own. Am I, am I, am I wrong for saying that? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yep. Not at all. So the Lulberts will always be, <laughs> always be a kind of resource for a lot of people. And I want, I like talking about other things. Um, it's not just specifically about that. Like we talked about some of the things that you were involved with. We talked about snooze. <laughs> like, uh, I think we did a show the other day about Sargon of Applebee's. I mean, so the, we're talking about things that aren't libertarian related. Um, you, did, I, did you miss that show where we talked about Sargon? No, I listened to that. I okay. listened to that. That was, that was good. <laughs> so yeah, we talk about other things, too. But I think there definitely needs to be something out there that people can link back and go like, oh, oh, this person isn't that good. Oh, this person. Oh, here's some allegations about these people. Here's these allegations about these people. Just be aware. Just be aware. Yes. Any group that you're in, you, you may love the, the people that are involved with it. That's fine. But just be aware that in any kind of community, especially when they're tight knit like that, and there's a lot of trust going around, people are going to take advantage of that trust. And it's going to be people that you trust, unfortunately, that are going to be betraying it. So always keep a skeptical mind on anytime anyone's ever asking for money or asking for pictures of your dog. <laughs> just, fucking be, just be aware of what you're getting into. Is that right? I think that's that's yeah. a good, that's a, that's a good positive thing to close on. I think yeah. so. <laughs> so where where can they uh, hear more of you? Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm still on Facebook, despite, you know, you're, you're, you're constant pleas to get people off of that. I just don't care. I don't use it. But, yeah, most of my content's still going on Steam. It. Um, and, unfortunately. And my constant pleas to get people off of that platform, too. But that's a whole other thing. Hey, well, I, I mean, I can send people to solpodcast.org, solpodcast.org, but we haven't put anything up in a while there. Dave went ahead and canceled our Libsyn without telling me. So, Are like, we don't, we're not... Well, he he gave me like basically three weeks warning by saying, "Hey, I'm gonna do this," and they said we're gonna be good through the end of the month. And I'm like, "But uh, okay, um, I'm still trying to get hooked up with Derek Slopey to get everything moved over. I just yeah. haven't got around to it yet, so it'll be back up and running. I mean, the page is still there. I think Paul still Gordon still YouTube. hosts our stuff. Yeah, everything's still okay. up on YouTube, so you can listen to the old stuff there. But hopefully, I'll have some new stuff out soon because I'm gonna try to record some episodes this week while yeah. I'm here, and they'll go up somewhere. <laughs> since, since I started a new YouTube channel. I kind of know the ins and outs. Do you have 100 subscribers on your channel? On the, on the SOL one? Yeah, we do. Okay. We have like 2,000. So, so you have your own custom custom URL, something that you can verbally yes. say? Yes. Uh, I think yeah, I think the I, I think the I think the Seeds of Liberty one is still Seeds of Liberty. I think that's what it still is. Um, it's been a while, let's, but I think the YouTube is Seeds of Liberty. Of Liberty YouTube. I'll put it in the show notes either way. Tube. Go. I'll put it in the in the in the things anyway. Let's. See. Oh, it's it's still giving me the, the the long one. Oh. And I'm not subscribed, so it's gonna make me start playing something. No, it's not. Okay, so yeah, I, I don't know. It it doesn't say. But uh, the the channel name is. Let me hit back since that does not tell me either. Seeds of Liberty podcast. Oh, podcast. Okay, there you go. Yeah, Seeds of Liberty podcast, and everything's still there. Uh, so there's there's still that. Yeah. Uh, I just I just barely got over my because I started a new YouTube channel. I talked about it in the last episode. Jim Jesus Two Electric Boogaloo. If you want to listen to it. Um, but anyways. Um, I got a uh, got a new YouTube channel, so I'm I'm learning kind of all the new rules and ins and outs of all the re things. I mean, remember back in the day when you just started a YouTube channel, you got your own custom URL right when yep. you created it. Now you have to wait till you get us hundred subscribers, otherwise you get a bunch of weird characters and letters that start with you. Um. So yeah, now now mine is Jim Jesus YouTube.com slash Jim Jesus Two Electric Boogaloo, and it's number two. So Jim Jesus Two, number two. You don't type out number two. It's just the number <laughs> two. God damn it. People, sorry, I have, to, I have to do that. People are artistic. So Jim Jesus 2, Electric Boogaloo. And then I 
hopefully. Let's, let's find out. Is it you just said Seeds of Liberty or SOL? Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's find out. SOL podcast. And that's all channel that's does all not exist. I posted anything. Yeah, channel does not exist. So I'll just link I'll just link the weird character letters until we can figure oh, out. Oh, just put SOL goes. just put uh, there's there should be a link to it from solpodcast.org. Just put there that in there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> should be a, there should be links to all of our crap through there somehow, some yeah. way. <laughs> I should create something like jimjesus.com slash YouTube or something like that that will redirect. That would probably be easier. Yep. And you can join our Discord at Lulbert, or sorry, discord.lulberts.com. And it'll take you directly to our Discord server. And you can hang out with all of us, even though it's technically not a Lulberts Discord server. But um, the the three admins there are all are listen to it. So. <laughs> And, and I and I am an admin, so, <laughs> so I, guess I, I guess I listen to it when I make it. So there's that. <laughs> Which you, are you? Uh, yeah, you don't you don't you don't participate in. I know you're in it. Yeah, you I I freak, I forget to use Discord most of the time. I have it on my phone and on my laptop. I just I use it sparingly. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people put all, like the blame on Discord for like all the drama that happens. It's like no. I remember back in the day, everyone used to complain that Facebook was a big drama center. Twitter is a big drama center. Look, any any platform that connects two people together creates drama. End of story. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's Discord or whatever. It's going to create drama. Just If you don't want drama, just don't deal with it. Just do what I do and ignore it. Unless you're being gaslit into it. <laughs> but, not going to talk about it. Fuck furries. Anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hail Satan, fuck furries. Yeah, hail Satan, fuck furries, if in hell. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, man, thanks for coming on. Am I here now? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Um, uh, oh, all right. But I am recording, so. The Lulberts, right. that's our word. Oh, shit, hold on. Are you just. <laughs> you said something in the middle of it. We'll try it again. The Lulberts, that's our word. Brought to you by the Freedom Fiends podcast. Pod. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Jinx me. Fuck. This is going in and out takes real. Let's try it again. <laughs>